Okay, um, this is my last video on feed forward neural networks. Um, we're just going to talk about um, motivating the sigmoid. Okay, I'm not talking about taking laxatives, I'm talking about um, giving some mathematical background and justification for why you might expect to see um, a sigmoid function when you're trying to infer something about some data you're presented with. And the particular example that I'll give, which is relevant to um, problem two of the homework, is inferring um, the variance of some distribution. Inferring distributional variance. Okay. So if you remember back to when we talked about Bayesian inference, um, inferring rates of spiking models. Uh, we talked about computing likelihood ratios um, as a means of signal detection or as a means of dissociating uh, two different neuron types that you might be observing from. Um, this is an example that could be applicable to neural data processing or the actual computations of a, a neural network in the brain. So let's say um, that you have two possible sources of signals, okay, each with um, a mean of some variable zero. This could be some, you know, position. It could be, you know, it's either at the center of your fovea or um, towards the periphery, some objects you're viewing. Um, it could be, uh, you know, some other signal that's just been mean shifted so that you... Um, you know, treat the the real mean as as just just zero, and the only way that these two distributions are different that might uh, generate observations is just that they have uh, different variance. Okay, sigma one and sigma two. Okay, and they're Gaussians, so everything's easy or easier than if they weren't Gaussians. And we just want to say, given some sample from these distributions, call it Z, okay, which distribution was sampled, okay? So let's say, you know, I observe some value Z, maybe it's right here, and I want to know um, is it more likely that distribution came from uh, the uh, distribution 1, I'll call it F1, or distribution 2, F2, okay? And I'll just write out what F1 is, just as a Gaussian, just so we have that formula at hand. It's going to be um, square root of 2 pi, 1 over square root of 2 pi, uh, sigma 1, e to the minus z squared over 2 sigma 1 squared, okay? And then f2 will be 1 over square root of 2 pi sigma 2 e to the minus z squared over 2 sigma 2 squared. Okay, fine. All right, and let's assume, okay, the problem, the probability that I'm sampling from distribution one is the same that I'm sampling from distribution two. Okay, so in other words, they both have probability 0.5 that you're sampling from. Uh, that's your prior. So we have um, a uniform prior. Okay, I have no bias to suspect that either one may be sampled from. Okay. And the question that I want to know is, what's the probability um, that I sampled from S2 given uh, some sample Z? That's my question mark there. Okay, how do we compute that? Well, we use Bayes' rule. Okay, so what's Bayes' rule tell us? Bayes' rule tells us that P of S equal to, given Z, is equal to the probability that z of z given that s equals 2 times the probability that s equals 2. And then I'm going to use the law of total probability to really break up 
p of z. So I have p of z given s equals 1 okay, times the probability s equals 1 plus probability of z given s equals 2 times the probability that s equals 2. Okay? So what's nice about this is because probability that s equals 2 and probability of s equals 1 are the same, I can just cancel them all out. They're all 0 0.5. And I can also divide through the numerator and the denominator by the probability of z given s equals 2. So what I get is something much simpler. It's 1 over 1 plus the probability that of z given that s equals 1. I just switched the order of um, this and this now. And divided by the probability of z given that s equals 2. All right. So that's what I'm down to needing to calculate. I can do that. I just plug in the form of my um, distribution functions, right? The probability of s equals 1 um, of z given s equals 1 and the probability of z given s equals 2, well, that's just given by these likelihoods here. That's exactly what they are, okay? All right. So this, let me just use a colored pen so I can write over everything. This is equal to the probability of z given s equals 1. And this is the probability of z given s equals 2. Sorry to get a bit sloppy there. Okay. So you plug all that in, right? So um, it turns out that that is 1 over the square root of 2 uh, pi. 1 over sigma 1, and then I got 1 over 2 pi sigma 2, so we're at 2 pi sigma 2. I got up here e to the minus z squared over uh, 2 sigma squared, e to the minus z squared, over 2 sigma 2 squared. But I can simplify this a lot, right? I can cancel these out. I can bring the theta 2 up top and the theta 1 down below. Okay? And I can combine the arguments, right? I can get exp of minus z squared over 2 sigma 1 squared plus z squared over 2 sigma 2 squared, and I can even write this a little bit more compactly as minus sigma 2 squared minus sigma 1 squared over 2 sigma 1 squared sigma 2 squared z squared plus log of sigma 2 over sigma 1, okay? All right, so if I call this thing here w, and I call this thing here x, and I call this thing here theta, well, I've got, when I go back up to this, this function here, right? I can see I have a sigmoid, right, where the weight is determined by uh, this, okay, my input's determined by this, and my bias is determined by this. So at the end of the day, what we have is that P that S equals 2, given Z, is just equal to 1 over 1 plus exp minus wx plus theta, where now I'll write out all of this, um, all of
all of these parameters, right? So they're log of sigma 2, yeah, sigma 2 or sigma 1. And we got that W equals sigma 1 squared. So, sorry, sigma 2 squared minus sigma 1 squared divided by 2 sigma 1 squared sigma 2 squared. Okay. And x is equal to z squared. Okay, so that motivates why uh, it's useful to have sigmoids because they fall out naturally of uh, doing uh, statistical calculations uh, over uh, data sets. And in your homework, um, you'll show how this works with uh, multivariate Gaussian inputs. It works very similarly. Uh, the calculations follow very similarly. There's just um, more dimensions involved. Okay.